My name is Anita Ray. Um, I'm one of the advisors for the FAD research program. Uh, I am a trained organismal biologist and ecologist, just graduated from Colorado College with a specialty in marine ecology and sustainability. Hi, and my name is Eric Schneider. Um, I'm a researcher at CEI. I actually started here as a research intern in 2013, um, worked here for about a year and a half and then went up to the University of Illinois for a master's degree in natural resources. Um, came back here full time in 2017 and I'm currently working on a PhD thesis through the University of Glasgow uh, on some of the work that's going to be presented right after this. Um, this is my eighth semester teaching the research class. And I'm really excited for the next two presentations, which are going to fall under um, a relatively new project going on at CEI called the Exuma Sound Ecosystem Research Project that is investigating different aspects of life in the ocean, open ocean here in the Bahamas. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something. Good morning. We're the FADS Research Group. My name is Riley. I'm Sam. I'm Keely. I'm Antonia. I'm Charlie. I'm Asher. I'm Audrey. And I'm Tess. This semester, we've been researching how structures interact with the pelagic ecosystem. The pelagic ecosystem is the open ocean that's located offshore. It's the largest ecosystem in the world. This means that there's little to no structure, so whenever there are any floating objects, fish will gather around it. Fish do this for a sense of food security as well as shelter. Organisms such as tuna, mahi, and even sharks are attracted to these floating objects. Sargasm, as you can see on the screen, is a coastal or pelagic seaweed species which comprises most of the structure in the open ocean, as well as driftwood and other floating objects. It often harbors high levels of biodiversity and is an essential fish habitat in the pelagic ecosystem. It is such a, it is such a, it is such a necessary uh, open, open open structure that it is actually a legally protected fish habitat in the United States. There's been a rapid increase in sargassum in the Atlantic belt in recent years, primarily due to rising carbon emissions as well as nutrient discharge. The main goal of our projects is to see how organisms interact with structure in the pelagic ecosystem. Of our two projects, we will first be speaking of the sargassum project. In this project, we are creating a catalog in which we are characterizing the biodiversity within sargassum. For our sargassum project, we have a certain protocol we use to collect sargasm. What this looks like is using a sargasm trawl, which is essentially a large net that we drag from behind a boat to collect sargasm out in the ocean. Our control is comparing the biodiversity that's out in the open ocean to how much biodiversity there is in sargasm patches. We also use quadrate dip nets, which are square nets to scoop up sargasm. After we're done collecting sargasm in both of these processes, we take the sargasm back to CEI, Cape Luther Institute over there, and that's where we do our wet lab sorting process. For wet lab sorting, we sort through the sargasm and find as many organisms as we can, and the purpose for that is because we're eventually trying to build a catalog on all the different species that can be found in sargasm. We have preliminary results from sorting organisms out of two quadrat dip nets. In the small sample of sargasm, we found 122 different organisms. These organisms varied, belonging to many different species and four different animal phylums, Arthropoda, Cnidaria, Mollusca, and Chordata. In the photos, you can see the organisms that we found. Here's a pipefish belonging to the Chordata phylum. We also found a nudibranch belonging to the mollusca phylum. This specific species of nudibranch is unique because they spend their entire lives floating in sargasm. We also found many snee snails belonging to the mollusca phylum. We found a sargasm fish belonging to the chordata phylum. This species of fish has adapted to use its pectoral fins to walk in the sargasm. And we found a sea spider belonging to the arthropoda phylum. Another, or as stated before, we are using the sargasm protocol to create a catalog. The significance of this catalog is to characterize the life living in sargasm and further understand the biodiversity within the sargasm. In addition, the project is important because it allows us to track the abundance of sargasm in the Exuma Sound. This is relevant because sargasm is increasing in abundance and 
not that many people know about it or how it's affecting the pelagic ecosystem. Next steps for this project include using the protocol to observe the content of microplastics in the sargasm. And this will help see how the microplastics are affecting the extent of biodiversity. Now to refocus on structure in the pelagic ecosystem, we're gonna take a look at man-made fads. Fad stands for fish aggregation devices. Over the past few decades, fisheries have figured out that fish tend to gather around these floating objects, so they decided to place their own in the waters. Fads are essentially just big buoys that look like this, and they can either be anchored to the ocean floor or can float at the surface and fish will gather around it. Fisheries will then go and collect the fish. This is extremely important for tuna fisheries because 60% of the world's tuna is caught at these fads. Unfortunately, this can lead to bycatch, which is the unwanted catching of species of, of different species. This is very unsustainable because it doesn't allow the fish to grow up. This has sparked interest to understand how fish use the fads and reduce the amount of bycatch. There are three main uses to fads. First on the left is a coastal fad. These are anchored in shallow waters and are used for more coastal fisheries and are used for by local fishermen to catch coastal fish. Moving into the deeper ocean, we have a drifting fad. Drifting fads are used by commercial fisheries and are floating on the top of the water. They are equipped with GPS trackers so fishermen know exactly where they are. To the right is another fad, and this is anchored to the bottom of the ocean and is a subsurface fad. This means that you cannot see it from the surface of the ocean and is mainly used for research purposes due to the fact that it is not accessible to fishermen. Moving on to our next project, acoustic telemetry. Acoustic telemetry is knowing the location of something in a given space with sound. Our purpose in this project is to develop a system to study the movement of fish around a fad. There are two main components to acoustic telemetry. First is a transmitter. The transmitter is what is placed on the fish and sends the information to the receivers. The receivers, in our case, are aligned on the fad on the anchor line. We have, we have three receivers on our fad, one at 10 meters, 100 meters, and 200 meters. We are the first people ever to deploy a system like this, so we had to do a lot of testing and see if it works. Our first step of testing is doing drift tests. This is essentially where we're in a boat, drifting a transmitter by the fad at different depths. We would go by at different depths several times and make sure it's, the system works. For our final phase of testing, we chose to implant two transmitters or fish tags into two barracuda we'd observed swimming around the fad. They served as test subjects in our effort to quantify the effectiveness of our vertical array and provide more realistic fish-like movement for study. Each tag co communicates with the receivers. They do this by sending an acoustic signal or ping. Upon receiving this, the receivers mark the exact time. Since sound travels through water at a constant speed, we're able to calculate the distance from the tag to a receiver. With one receiver, however, we're not able to pinpoint the exact location of the tag. With two receivers and the same information, by this meaning that the tag is a known distance from two different receivers, we're able to find the exact depth and distance from the fad that the tag is. These two circles on the screen represent the known distances that the tag is from each receiver. The intersection point is the meeting point of those known distances and is by extension the location of the fish. And now that the vertical array method has proven to be successful, the next step is to implement the method elsewhere by tagging more commercially relevant fish to understand how fish segregate based on size and species. This information can then help fisheries reduce their bycatch by knowing the, the depths at which different species reside at, and then the, fisheries, then the fisheries can position the nets to only capture the targeted fish. For example, if the divide between the tuna above and below the silky sharks, which are a common bycatch species, is at the 100 meter receiver mark, then that is, a, that is where the fisheries know to place the net and to only encapsulate the tunas and not the silky sharks. This method could also provide potential partnerships between scientists and fisheries, mainly because of how it benefits both sides, due to the fact that the anchor lines on the vertical arrays are deployed on the thousands of existing fads already in the ocean, 
which save resources for the scientists as well as economical resources for the fisheries. In addition, it is very hard to manage the fads when fisheries are using them due to how vast the ocean is and how hard it is for boats to patrol these areas and to regulate each fisheries' catch. By developing new systems and technologies such as our acoustic array and our sargasm catalog, we are beginning to understand the existence of life and the realm of the pelagic ecosystem. It is surprising to think that we have mapped more of the surface of the moon than we have our own open ocean. What little we do know about this ecosystem, we can see the importance that structure holds. Especially as structures are increasing in abundance through sargasm as we pollute more nutrients into the open ocean, and the fact that fisheries deploy 100,000 artificial fads into the ocean every single year, fads are becoming a very common part of the pelagic ecosystem. But we still don't really understand how they're impacting the greater realm. So, although the pelagic ecosystem is very vast, it is still a limited resource. And we're using it faster than we can quantify. Our research and the significance of it lies in the impact that it has in fisheries, in fisheries management, especially in the potential that it has to reduce bycatch. Whether or not we live on the coast, we are all benefiting from the health of the open ocean. Whether through the tuna that we eat or the air we breathe, it impacts every single one of us. This is why it is so important to study the pelagic realm, to both learn how to sustain and to manage it in years to come. We would like to acknowledge We would like to acknowledge Eric Schneider, Anita Ray, Natasha Inahosa, FIU, Eliana LaFrance, Kayla Crump, and Brendan Talwar. Additionally, the Moore Charitable Foundation, the Cape Luther Institute, the University of Glasgow, the Excerpt Team, and the Island School. like to now open up the floor for questions. Yes. What um, information allowed you all to determine that the CO2 content in the air affects the CO2 <laughs> So the question is, what allowed us to know how the CO2 content in the air is affecting sargasm? Well, the increasing CO2 levels, it basically creates a somewhat of a sargassum bloom in the Atlantic, as well as the nutrient discharge, which is inland fertilizer and animal waste coming from uh, inland rivers and farms. Um, and it creates a sargassum bloom in the Atlantic belt. And um, yeah, there are two factors. It's, it's the increased CO2 rate as well as the nutrient discharge. So yeah, are there any more questions? The question was, what extent are commercial fisheries ready to act on the information of the fads? Are they willing to like cooperate with bycatch? So currently fisheries are fined for the bycatch that they have and bycatch is a major threat to the greater pelagic ecosystem as species are becoming endangered. Um, so although our system is very new, it is something that in the future could potentially be deployed on hundreds of thousands of drifting fads across the ocean to extend our knowledge, which would also benefit the fisheries as they're able to both know where the fish that they want are, which will be more resource effective in the way that they catch, as well as saving them economic costs from by the catch. So fisheries are being informed on this, and hopefully this research can impact them in the future. Yes? What's the size and configuration of the fads that are floating around in the open ocean? What do they look like? Do you see them, or are they subsurface, or whatever? Um, so the question was, what is the size and configuration of the fads floating around in the open ocean, and are they visible, and what exactly do they look like? 
Um, so yeah, there are many different types of fats. Um, there are subsurface, fat, subsurface fats, and those are the ones that we have. Um, there also are drifting fats, which are on the top of the water, and you can see them. And there are also anchored fats that are floating on the surface, too. Uh, the question was, after years of the fad in the water, have you seen an increase of species on the fad? <laughs> so thank you so much for that question. We haven't really covered past our own semester in what we've seen at the fad. So you can definitely check in with our research advisors for information more on the broad scope of what we've seen and if that's been increasing, but we haven't covered uh, and it's not really in our study to see whether it is increasing, if that answers your question. Which one of you tagged the barracuda? So the question was, which one of you tagged the barracuda? <laughs> well, uh, I caught the external tagged barracuda and my friend Charlie caught the internal tagged barracuda. Um, they were both around 25 to 30 pounds and they were caught at the North Fad. <laughs>